Hi, this is Kronos with a video on how to create and use PeerCoin paper wallets. Paper wallets are a great way to store cryptocurrencies for a long time while minimizing the risk that they'll be lost or destroyed or stolen. Let's get started. The best way to get to the wallet generator software is through the PeerCoin website at peercoin.net. Then click Wallets in the navigation menu and scroll down to the Paper Wallet section. Click the button to jump over to the Paper Wallet Generator. At this point, the safest thing to do is to disconnect your computer from the internet so that if there's any malware on your computer or a virus inside the web page, it won't be able to send the new private keys you're generating to the bad guys who would then steal your peer coins. So at this point, go over to your modem or router and unplug them to make sure your computer cannot communicate with the internet. Once you get back, move your mouse in a random formation to give the computer a random seed to generate your PeerCoin wallet. You can see this number gradually counting down to zero. When it gets to zero, the page will be ready to generate paper wallets. Almost there. All right, now we have a paper wallet ready to go. The public key you see here always starts with a capital P. Every PeerCoin address starts with a capital P for PeerCoin and every private key starts with the number seven. That's the way you can tell a PeerCoin public key from a private key. To jump over to the printable paper wallets, click the paper wallet tab in the tab strip. We just need one address, so choose addresses per page one and addresses to generate one, and then click generate. Finally, click the print button on the right of the screen. Here, let me resize my browser so you can see that. There it is, click print. The safest way to print this wallet is directly through a cable to your printer. Once again, if you print over a Wi-Fi connection or through the internet, there's a tiny chance that an attacker will be seeing your print job and will be able to see the private key that you're printing. Once the paper wallet is printed, you can close your browser window, I would recommend shutting down your computer, and then reconnect your modem or router to bring your internet back online. Some people go so far as to create their paper wallet on a new computer that's never been connected to the internet, just to make sure that the private key is not intercepted by anyone. But this is good enough for me. In fact, I even left my internet connection connected for my paper wallet, and my pure coins haven't been stolen yet, so I don't think there was a problem. But it's better to be safe than sorry. All right, now let's look at how to load your paper wallet with new pure coins. First, open your PeerCoin wallet software and click Send Coins. Enter the PeerCoin public key in the Pay2 box. Remember, this always starts with a capital P and a sequence of numbers and letters. Don't worry if you mistype this key because the wallet software has a way to automatically detect if the wallet address is invalid, so you won't accidentally send your PeerCoins into the oblivion where no one can get them back. Then enter a label for the transaction, such as Paper Wallet, and the number of peer coins you'd like to send. Once again, the safe thing to do is to send a small number of peer coins in your first transaction, just to make sure everything goes as planned. Once you're comfortable with using paper wallets, you can use the entire transaction that you plan to store on a paper wallet. Then click Send. As you can see here, the wallet software detected that this is not a valid peer coin public key. For one thing, it's much too short. And once you enter a public key in there correctly, though, the peer coins will be sent. Now the tricky part. How do you redeem the paper wallet to get your peer coins back? First, you'll need to make sure that your wallet is unlocked. So click the settings menu and choose unlock wallet for minting only. That's good enough. If you're using PeerCoin QT and you don't have this menu option, click help and then debug window. Then in the console tab, you'll type a command to unlock your wallet. The command is wallet pass phrase and then the wallet um, encryption key. Finally, the number of seconds that you'd like to have the wallet unlocked. 999 seconds ought to be long enough. What is that? 16, 17 minutes, something like that? And then press enter. This has unlocked my wallet so that I can import the private key. If your wallet's not unlocked, you don't even need to do this command at all. But the next step to import your, your private key, you'll still need to do in this console window. The command to import the private key so you can spend the peer coins on a wallet is import priv key. Priv is short for private, obviously. So type import priv key, and then space, and then the private key you'd like to import. You'll have to type this in directly off of the paper wallet that you have in front of you, so it'll take a little while to type that in. 
Don't worry, once again, if you type it in wrong, nothing will happen, but your peer coins won't be imported. I'm going to take the shortcut and jump back over to the website and copy the private key off of this paper wallet. Because look at that, I can copy horizontal text. Watch this. Are you ready? This is going to be pretty fancy. Here we go. Selecting horizontal text. Not everyone can do this, but Kronos can do it. Copy. Oh, a copy image? Is that not going to work? Control C, that might copy it. Okay, I got my private key. Don't tell anyone. You're not supposed to do it that way because you're supposed to only have it on a paper wallet. Anyway, then you press enter and it will import the private key. It takes a little while for that to happen and then you'll see a box with the right arrow pop up, which means that the client software has given you a response. This is going to take a moment more while it crunches the numbers to import the key. And then it's done. Now when you click receive coins, you'll see that address in your wallet. Let's see, where is it? What, what was my public key again? My public key started P-E-K. So if I jump back to my wallet software and click receive coins, you can see P-E-K in a receivable address. That means that the public and private keys were imported to the wallet. Now, if there were any pure coins in that paper wallet, they would have automatically been added to my balance. That's all it takes to import a private key from a paper wallet into the client. There's one more thing I'd like to show you, and it has to do with encrypting the private key in order to keep the wallet even safer. If you don't encrypt your private key, then someone who breaks into your house and steals your paper wallet will easily be able to use these steps to import that private key and steal your peer coins. By encrypting the private key, they have to know your encryption phrase in order to steal the peer coins. To do this, you click the BIP38 Encrypt checkbox, and then enter the encryption key that you'd like to use. If you use a short phrase, it will still be quite secure, and you know, six or eight characters is still good because it takes a lot of brute force to crack open a wallet in this manner. However, if you want to be really secure, you can use a very long phrase and then write down that phrase and store it somewhere else. For example, there's something called a GUID, or G-U-I-D, which is a long phrase of numbers and letters. If you search the internet for GUID and click this online GUID generator, for example, let's generate some GUIDs. Here's a very, very long string of numbers and letters that we could use as the encryption key. All you have to do is be sure to write this down so that you can get your peer coins back when you're ready to spend them. I'm going to paste that key into the box. Now when I click Generate, let's generate one and one address, it will generate an encrypted private key. This takes a little while so you can see this spinner running. This is a good thing because that means anyone who's trying to guess your private key encryption will have to run this spinner at every guess. So even a small short passcode is going to take a long time to crack because the process of guessing even once can take a little while. Okay, now you can see the private key is on two lines, and the text is very, very tiny. It starts with the number 6, which tells you that it's encrypted. I'm going to show you how to decrypt this now, so I'm going to copy this text once again horizontally. If you follow the steps in the normal fashion, you've printed out this key, so you'll have to type this in manually. Now I've cop copied the private key. To decrypt your encrypted private key, you can use this same website. Click Wallet Details in the far right of the screen. Here's where you enter the private key that you'd like to decrypt. You can see the key formats include BIP38, which is the encryption format you've used. I'm simply going to paste the encrypted private key into this box. When you're doing this, you're going to have to type this in from your paper wallet, of course, because there's no clipboard on an actual piece of paper. You can see this key starts with the number 6 and then a capital P, which means that it's a BIP encrypted peer coin private key. After you've typed it in, click View Details. The page will then prompt you for the passphrase. This is the passphrase that was used when you created this private key. I have it over here in my GUID generator, but you'll need to get it off the piece of paper that you stored this key on, or perhaps you've memorized it. That would be pretty impressive. Now that that's pasted in there, click Decrypt BIP38. Once again, the spinner will have to run as we decrypt the private key. After a few moments, we'll see the actual PeerCoin private key in the decrypted format. I'm scrolling down the page, 
private key WIF. This stands for Wallet Import Format, which is the standard format for PureCoin private keys. Here you can see the number seven on a long string of numbers and letters. This is the regular decrypted PureCoin private key that you would use to load into the PureCoin wallet. You can see it starts with seven and it's a long string. So you would select this, select copy, and then move back to your PureCoin wallet software. Debug window. This is where you would import the private key. As you can see, this private key, 78K, oh, it's a different one. I was gonna tell you it's the same as my previous one, but we generated a new wallet, so it's not. I think that's everything there is to cover. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, feel free to post in the comments below or visit the forums at purecointalk.org. We'd love to hear from you. I'm Kronos. Thanks for watching.